It's too. That's yeah, funny I, I have actually not rated yet. I hope everybody actually, took that out of context. Oh no, I've got context. audio in the background. It's gonna loop. Let's not do that. Oh no, you've got audio in the background. It's gonna loop. No. Oh no, no! You've got audio in the background. It's gonna no! loop. No! Oh no! I've got audio in the background. It's gonna loop. Oh no! Oh no! I've got audio in the background. It's gonna loop. Oh no! I'm gonna get audio in the background. It's gonna loop. Oh no! I've got audio in the background. It's gonna loop. I like turtles. Hi everybody, we're here. We're gonna do a show. A uh, hundred percent of the guests that were invited have shown up. <laughs> I oh, I don't think Manny's in the chat. I feel bad. He's that will always be the thing he's known for. And I feel a little bad because he should be, you know, like he should be known for bringing great insight, great thoughts, great strategy. There's a lot of things that Manny should be known for bringing to the show, but at least for the foreseeable future, he's going to be the guest that didn't show up. Oh. So what you're saying is he's just oh. going to be bringing disappointment. Uh, yeah, it was a disappointment that he wasn't here, but that's a testament yeah. to how good he is. I mean, we always love having Manny on. Yeah, like if I wasn't disappointed that Manny uh, yeah, totally that says, ignored that us and didn't show up. If you were. Yeah, if I was just like, eh, whatever, it was fine. That's a bad thing. <laughs> that's rough. That's, uh, My disappointment rough, rough that Manny couldn't be here is the testament to his caliber. Yeah, yeah. That's that how works. I the listener know that he was very important. Yeah. Because I was sad. Bum, 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 bum. Wah, 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 I should wah, log wah. off the world of Warcraft. Yeah, probably. I it mean, it might be good. I don't know. We've I mean, never, we've never played about. while we were recording the show, but maybe we should. <laughs> it's, it's a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we might've once, I mean, occasionally we'll log in to look up, like, a stat or something, but I don't know if we ever actually, like, were recording the show. Oh, you know what? We did do one episode where we were waiting for something to spawn. Oh, that's right. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just like, all right, we're going we're gonna to pop open the thing, watch the rare, do a show. Okay. Uh, Wicked, I have a question. So you said, shit, I like Manny more than most people. Does that mean most people, like, your like of Manny is more so than most people like him? Or that you like him more than you like other people? Because it could be taken either way. Yeah. Also, you typoed. But, you know, let's not dwell on little things like that. Or even point it <laughs> out for that matter. Yeah, let's, let's probably not. More than I like other people. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's fair. So, so he'd be like, like, Manny, John. No, I'm, me, I'm much lower on that list. Other people. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> wow. Okay. Based on her next response to you, John, you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It wasn't hard to know where I was going to wind up on that list. It's like Manny here, John here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, why even put something on the list if it's so far down you'll never see it? <laughs> yeah, you're on your own. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, you hell. Ready to do an actual show? It's uh, it's time. I guess that's oh, what I, happens. This isn't the show? No. No, this no, is we, a free show. We kick it live. Okay. We make sure everybody's comfortable. If anything weird's going on, I mean, they I'm yell at us. I'm pretty comfortable. I, we were just chatting. Yeah. We're talking about well, That's Manny. what the show's going to be like, too. So our, perfect. That's our new, that's our new topic. Nice it's just Manny in general. Segue. He's going to be here in spirit every episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, all right. Well, if that's the case, I will start the recording. Okay, well, that's good. Let's I wonder what the percentage of, of recordings uh, that we start start with me saying, I'll start the recording. Or well, I'm the starting YouTube, the recording. Yeah. Or, I, I don't, hello, I don't YouTube. get that in for the uh, podcast. Or, oh. hi, everybody. Hello. Or, what's up, China? <laughs> I think we did that once. <laughs> so, are you recording, John? That, that means you're like... Yeah, I'm, reco I'm recording okay. right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Ryan, you're good? good all right well then let's get the show started
Welcome to Now's World Roundtable, episode 359. It's Friday night. I'm back. Manny's still not here. But with me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Hello, Ben. It is Friday night here in Azeroth, and I'm happy that you're back. I'm happy that you're leading uh, the charge. You've got the high energy. You kind of yell at everybody to kick things off, just to really yeah. put the, geez, we're going to start into them. <laughs> Like, hey, if you're going to listen to a podcast, you're going to know. It's beginning right now. Why? Because Ben's yelling at you. Yeah. I like or, it. you know, on the actual podcast version, the, you push play. Uh, but Ben, I'm not the only person you're yelling at today. <laughs> no. No, you're not. Uh, uh, it is actually my pleasure to oh. welcome board to the roundtable. Uh, some might know him as TBK. Some might know him as TBK Zord. I call him Ryan. So, hey, Ryan, how's it going? It's going good. It's also Friday night here. Oh, by the way. Mm. Ooh. you are not past the international dateline, I see. Oh, well, it's Valentine's Day. It is yes, Valentine's it is. Day. Hey, you know what? We're going to all spend Valentine's Day together. Um, let's start with a poem. Uh, roses are red. Blueberries are blue. I can't believe I just had to explain blueberries to you. Okay. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue, and all my base are belong to you. Okay, sounds like you've read that one before, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, roses are red, mm -hmm. violets are blue. Yep. I love Ben Bumhopper more than you. Oh, well, that makes sense. You do a lot of shows with him. You know, I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't really judge. That's fair. Oh, man, I just, I feel like it, it, ben. this is going to be a great episode. Ben's face John, is red, yeah, Ryan's shirt is blue, <laughs> dear Santa Claus, bring me a PS2. That's an, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an old one. Yeah, that works, that works. But uh, it is Friday night. This is a show normally about World of Warcraft. And uh, so here's the thing. Uh, way back in... Gosh, I don't remember what month it was. I think it was some sort of summer month or whatever. Uh, Ryan actually came to town and was chatting with the, me and John. We went out to dinner with Nevermore as well. And we were talking about WoW and stuff like that. And, you know, he was kind of saying things like, yeah, I'm, kinda, I'm not playing anymore right now. So I'm like, great. I can't have him on the show then. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Way to then... uninvite yourself from the show. <laughs> <laughs> and then the most amazing thing happened. I got word that you're playing World of Warcraft. Let's so be honest. <laughs> let's, let's be honest, though. The most amazing thing tends to happen continually, like all the time. I just, I just have never been able to stop. Not, <laughs> not long. This was, this was actually the longest ever since, because I've, I've been playing WoW since back at the very beginning of closed beta when it was alliance only like level cap of 30 and there were four epics in the game and i saw them selling in stormwind for 40 gold Ooh. and it was it was mind-blowing to me because i was just like holy crap i have 10 silver and two copper how am i going to be able to afford this <laughs> purple shield that looks so cool it's got like fire cone from it or whatever uh, I this is this is the longest I've ne I I was a year and two months. It's the longest wow. I've never played WoW. Oh hey wait a minute this just in you guys uh, I've got a fresh comment from one of our listeners. Uh, I'll just go ahead and read it seeing as it just came in hot off the presses and uh, we'll just save commenters a lot of time. Just know this one's already taken up. If playing WoW is a prerequisite for being on the show, why is John on it? <laughs> so we'll just uh you know that's thank you thank you for your feedback we appreciate it uh thank you for writing in and this was another live comment read brought to you by azeroth roundtable it's like the first comment read it's true this is the first time we've done that bit <laughs> <laughs> you know you know live commenter person whoever you are because i know you're out there his name is john <laughs> yeah, <laughs> commented me. commented live 350 episodes just don't get to record themselves. That's right. Like, <laughs> unless you're doing you're doing the talking, they just don't they don't appear out of nowhere. This takes 
a lot of hard work and dedication. Sometimes so much so <laughs> that you don't even have time to play World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it's all writing all the show notes. <laughs> Uh, hey, but here's how I can prove that I have been playing a lot of WoW, because let me tell you, I have a question for you guys. This does not have to be a topic for tonight, but I feel that I have to ask this question. Um, okay. Hey, what if I offered you 3,000 Azerite to do something? Because that's apparently all the game offers anymore for any of your stupid <laughs> quests. <laughs> y you know, okay, so... It I would probably on... wait three days and it would just go away. No, it gets replaced <laughs> by another 3,000 Azerite quest. That is true. But as someone who I am probably going to be working on a Vulpira mage trying to, you know, buff her up and get her, you know, ready to do stuff and everything, a lot of Azerite seems like a great reward right now because when you you boost a character, they're like, woohoo, level 50 necklace. And then it's like, Oh, man, I have so much work to do. Yeah. Yep. 3,000 Azerite sounds great right now. Here's, here's, here's been my, my mindset since, basically since I started back into the game, because the, the anniversary event pulled me back. That was, that was the catalyst, because there was a Deathwing mount. And me, mm -hmm. being the obsessive compulsive mount collector that I am, had to have it now the the ironic thing about this the entirety of my time playing world of warcraft and being a mount collector is my main for the longest time has been a druid yeah <laughs> i have travel for i can see why I you're really dedicated to mounts <laughs> any of these yeah but i don't know i'm just I'm, I'm a terrible person like that but so anyways i came back for that and i uh i realized that Legion had spoiled me. Because in Legion, you didn't need any weapon drops. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think the devs forgot to add <laughs> weapons back yep. after Legion was done because I still haven't gotten any weapon drops. I agree with you, Ryan. This is an ongoing topic. <laughs> <laughs> I might complain about this every week. You're in good company. Yes. <laughs> because this was just an observation without like talking to anybody else or, you know, watching anything on the subject. This is it's just like where 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 the weapons at? And I'm I'm currently maining a monk mm -hmm. and it sucks because I need four. I need two one-handers and two two-handers to be able to play just all my specs. And it is... Uh, <laughs> just all my specs. Ryan well, plays a different this. version of World of Warcraft than me. <laughs> and I can see why he's way more upset about it than I am. Yeah, but imagine if you had an offhand and a main hand for your healing spec. Man, you that know... Five weapons. Yeah, which I currently do. They're all like item level 400 or whatever, <laughs> whatever, what it's like. It's it's like I go kill a turtle and he farts out. a. Oh, look, here's a uh, one handed axe that I swallowed the other day. Here you go. It's it's crap. But I take it because I can't find anything else. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real you know, it's a real dry spell. You know, I think the problem is that in Azeroth, we all got those artifact weapons and all the weapon merchants said, pack it up. We're done. They're never <laughs> going to. We're done. They're just using well, these now. We're, nobody has any interest. They're vendoring it. They're disenchanting it. We're done. Just just sell it all. And now all of a sudden they're like, they did what with them? Oh, you got to make more. Well, see, I think I know what the problem actually is. So because we are able to actually transmog our Legion artifacts as our weapons, and enough people are walking around with them transmogged. The devs are like, oh, yeah, those are still a thing. Yeah. So, yeah, no, makes sense. Uh, so just just kind of help illustrate, which I mean, anybody who's playing has got to know this is going on. But Sage Time in the chat, he's even said uh, the EU has actually had three times uh, emissary rewards for weapons. It's, it's happened three times since 8.3 came out. The North America servers, zero. I want to say that I saw it once, but I'll trust Sage there Time. There was one cause... time I know 
because I saw it. I could not believe my eyes. And it was the most motivated I've been to do world quests since 2017. Yeah. 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 It's 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 amazing what scarcity will do to promote <laughs> uh, behavior. And, well, and it's funny, too, because like rings and trinkets are also kind of falling under the same thing. Basically, if it's Tortolan, you have maybe a chance of getting one of those or like me, you can get the same ring over and over and over again from them as opposed to, you know, a second one or a trinket or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but then randomly in raid on Wednesday, I got from two bosses, two different trinket drops, which are both supposed to be best in slot for healing. So it's like, okay, so I'm good there for a while. Uh, I will say though, that John, one of them gives me fiery dragon wings and it's pretty cool. I've been wondering what did that? Cause I've been seeing a bunch of people with like wings. Oh, wait, I was like what? the warlock set that did that was a long time ago. What gives the wings? It's a trinket just off of Rathion. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah, it's like, uh, I, at least for me, mine's uh, int or agility because, you know, I'm a monk. But um, yeah, a lot of people in my raid team have it, too. So it, like we're just all kind of walking around. And all of a sudden, these fiery, cool wings just kind of pop out and flutter a little bit. And it's a used trinket, which I'm just like, oh, man, it's a used trinket. But then I looked at what the use is, and it's just it lets you slow fall. That's oh, all. That's great. It, it's an actual equipped trinket that does crap all on its own, but you could slow fall if you want. And I'm like, this is the best kind of trinket because that is the only time I will use a used trinket. Yeah. I've is been using a used trinket and I feel dumb. Uh, yes, it is. They changed it. Didn't used to be oh, a click to use. Crocked slow fall instead of. Oh, jeez. Slow fall. And apparently it was getting a lot of people killed. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations, <laughs> Blizzard. You discovered how trinket should work after you made the worst trinket ever. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. So like, okay, we gotta jump off this really high thing. Maybe I'll live. No. Nope. Not that time. Oh, it didn't no. go it didn't go off that time. Jimmy well, live well. though. Hey guys. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can see the logic behind it. You know, there's a lot of mechanics that pop you up in the air, and it's like, well, this will help mitigate that. But you have to know that if you give people a thing that gives them slow fall every now and then, they're going like to jump maybe. off things. Yeah, they're going to be like, <laughs> hey, sweet, I'm going to jump off something. Oh, yeah. as, as soon as they took away the reagent requirement for slow fall on mages, I hit that every single time I'm in the air, no matter, like, if it's just a tiny jump downstairs or whatever, I'm going to slow fall, float. Yeah, I, I will do. say as an engineer, I uh, I was a little a little uh, disappointed that I could not add a goblin glider to my legendary cloak. Oh, really? Because it's got an on use effect. That you uh, get at, like rank five or six. This or is why like on so use effects are bad. It. Stop it, Blizzard. <laughs> I'm going to say that the one that Ben's talking about with slow fall giving you that is good. Congratulations, you got one good <laughs> one good one. The rest are bad. Stop it. People don't yeah. like it. Do people like it? Go ahead. Somebody come at me and say, well, actually, I really like my used trinkets because it lets me control my burst damage at then. I'll tell you to shut up. It's not fun. And I don't like the well, extra button. <laughs> next time Manny's on, he might say that. He's very much a proponent of you know, really min-maxing your rotation and everything. And I'm sure there are better times to use it than not. So uh, we'll just say that there are times like that. Well, um, maybe next time Manny will use his call into the show fun. trinket and actually be here to defend his position. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, That's the last time I'm bringing, I'm invoking Manny because, wow, <laughs> um, we do miss you, Manny. Anyways. We do. I'll come back to us soon. <laughs> okay. So going back to like on use things. Uh, I have one other example of a perfect on use ability that a piece of gear had. Okay, let's hear this it. This was uh, 10 man raid Karazhan. The red ruby slippers that dropped off of the crone. If you're a cloth wearer, you put those on and they turn you into your your hearth, your hearthstone. Oh, yeah. So you right click it and then they just take you where your home is because there's no place like home. 
Can we take a moment, speaking of Hearthstones, uh, I don't know if you guys got the uh, collector's edition of Shadowlands pre-ordered. Yes, I did. Can we talk about how freaking awesome that Hearthstone animation is? Ryan, have you seen it? I have. It's oh, pretty man. cool. I mean, <laughs> so honestly, cool. like the the collector's edition or the uh, what is it like the eighty dollar edition or or whatever. It's I don't know why if you're gonna get Shadowlands like special edition, you wouldn't get that one because for five dollars more, you get like the Hearthstone animation, the transmog, and thirty days of game time, and it's just like a five dollar equivalency for for that. And let's no not, not forget to. the weapon enchant, which makes every weapon in the game look way better than it did before. Like, I got mad a little bit when I went through my collector's edition items because I was like, what? You've been sitting on this technology this whole time? We could have had some really awesome things and you're just now Wait, revealing it? What's the weapon enchant do? What does it look like? The ghostly, it turns your weapon into this ethereal, misty, what? glowing blade. You haven't seen you this yet. No, do you have to do something special to get that, or does it just show up in your transmog? I so? believe it just shows up in your transmog. Okay, I will ben, look for that. Ben, then. I know we talked earlier about playing the game while on the show. You should, <laughs> you should log in and see this, because you will have thoughts. I won't say that it's great for every weapon, but I loved it. It was awesome. And I think it's really cool. I'm not using it because it turns out it doesn't work on artifact weapons. There are a couple things that it won't go over the top of. If you can't add an enchant effect to the weapon, this obviously won't work. But oh my gosh, it's so good. I love it. Let, let's, let's be honest, though. A lot of the coolest stuff comes out as buy first before it ends up in the game. It's true. But mm -hmm. whatever. Like, almost all the coolest mounts are store mounts or not all but a good chunk of them like the what's the the little dragon one they came out with not too long ago the fey the, dragon that turns colors the oh the the dream no, the, one uh, or whatever the, yeah the dream one it's got the cool wings so that looks super cool it does actually look very cool i like the that it's like more of a fox looking dragon than anything else yeah yeah the, the backpack sweet. originally came out as a recruit a friend mm -hmm. yeah thing and we, i would I argue guess we the technically cooler have backpack. another one now yeah there's the other one which you grind technically for. two other expensive yep. if you're volpira you get a backpack Ooh, it's the heritage armor though so you know it takes a bit oh uh, yeah that that would take a minute, hot minute but yeah and the no i agree the the weapon enchant super cool yeah they're putting Which a lot I of cool stuff right in the now game. to look at it you <laughs> should John said it was okay. you should it's great it's really really good i like it yeah so it's... for some reason if the podcast right now is uh really chunky with the audio <laughs> uh that's why it's john's fault it like is entirely john's fault everything um, yeah, I don't know. They keep, you're right. And I do think it's unfortunate that these cool things keep popping up as premium items. Um, I do think that the cool stuff should be in the game. This is a game we pay a monthly fee for. It's a game, it's a, it's a game that should have the cool stuff in it mm -hmm. and additional purchases. I mean, collector's editions are something different. You want to push your collector's sure, edition. You want to sure. put something cool in it. Being like, hey, if you want a backpack, this really cool technology to have the only thing other than a cloak or nothing on your back, uh, do recruit a friend. I think those things are kind of shitty practices, to be frank. But well, it's not enough I to say, unsub, but I think it's shitty. Yeah. Uh, one thing I will say in the very least, though, and, you know, this is kind of a I'm glad this is the way that it works as opposed to others is the fact that all the stuff is purely cosmetic still. You know, yeah, it's a mount and it gets you to, to places faster. But the big thing is, is that you don't need it. The backpack is really cool and like awesome looking. But again, it's just something you don't need. Really, uh, Ben? Are you sure? <laughs> Who <laughs> loves transmogs yeah, so much? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I very much desperately want it, but I don't need it. And I think that that's the big takeaway here. I... Although disagree so with you ben. Anyway. 
Let's talk about this. Because, okay. yes, you're right. Do I need it to be able to play the game? No. But you need to what play. are we playing the game for if not to acquire loot and stuff? This is a game about attaining loot. These yeah. items could be constituted as loot. It, in fact, okay. it's the very visual representation of loot upon your person. Like... This is them giving you the point for the game. I get what you're saying with it being cosmetic. Me having it doesn't make me a better player than somebody who doesn't have it. But it is still saying like, hey, the loop of this game is you level up, you get more powerful, and you get stuff. And then when they turn around and they say, well, you can get more stuff, but you got to give us money for it. Yeah, that's not giving players power but it is still selling the point of the game. And when that stuff is cooler than the stuff you get by just subbing and giving them money monthly, that's when it starts to get seedy. If it was on the same level and balance, that's one thing. But when it's better, that's another. Is it called Wraith Chill? Uh, Did it turn your whole weapon kind of ghostly? The whole weapon? Blue and stuff? And you can kind of see through your weapon? Can't kind of see through it, but... (laughs) <laughs> chat room what's the what's the <laughs> transmog uh thing called somebody who because if i log in it's gonna mess up all the video and everything and it's gonna come through the stream it's called wraith chill it is wraith chill okay it is wraith chill yeah well, I, well, I, I, maybe, I, maybe... I kind of i kind of agree with you john because i this is this is a game that we pay monthly for and it's also a game that we not only pay monthly for we pay full price pretty much for the expansions yeah at the same time and so it's we just the upkeep for wow is probably one of the highest of any game just to play now i know there's things like Fortnite uh or something like that that (laughs) i'm sorry what was that (laughs) (laughs) something (laughs) caught in my throat uh that most people probably pay far more than 15 dollars a month for uh, mm-hmm. but again, that's their choice. They can play the game regardless of if they pay that or not. Yeah. Well, but I think that that's kind of the big difference here is the fact that we are paying per month. We get all this patch content and stuff like that. They don't need to entice us to, you know, like buy all the different things in order to keep the game going. You know, it's not like a, a free to play game where they're nickel and diming everything. These are just added to what's available in the game. And no, yeah, guys. everybody pays for them, though, because we all want everything. But I'm going to stand by the it, it's not required. And it's definitely not to, you know, bolster and keep the game alive like a free to play game. True. That's true. Yeah, and Leo uh, Wild says in the chat, how many mounts did they add in 8.3? I remember it was a good amount. It was. How many of those was a rat with wings and a cool special jump animation? My point is, a lot. (laughs) Some of those were like, hey, we took the vulture model and we made it a little bigger. Now it's a mount. I get what you're saying. Yes, they put a lot of stuff in the game for your sub for the standard amount. There are items that are better that they charge for. And maybe that's the way it should work, because what I just described makes Mm -hmm. sense. Hey, we have better items. You should have to pay for those. Okay, that kind of makes sense. I guess the line there is, do you feel you're getting a every couple of years full price video game and every single month $15 a month sub? Do you feel that is paying for enough content and enough quality content to make you happy. And if you don't feel that, you're probably looking at that stuff going, that's not really enough. No, why is why does there have to be an additional premium on that? And if you're totally content, then yeah, I can get why you look at that and you go, no, mm-hmm. they added enough stuff. That's great. Well, also on top of that, like mounts specifically, how often do they have a store mount? Like maybe two a year? Yeah, like, it's so not we have, often. We, yeah, we've been doing the Lunar Festival mounts, and I mean that's pretty cool. And then, um, like the 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 dragon foxy thing that that uh, recently came out. Then last year, the the Vulpine flying fox came out, and I know the other Lunar one did. 
Um, I don't have a shop open. I should open up my launcher again just to see what's there. But, I mean, for the most part, they don't really throw a ton into the store. Right. They don't populate it in a way that feels extremely predatory. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think and that's, I, why that's why they I get probably don't have it. super strong feelings against it. But it, every time they do come in, it's just like, oh, that is so cool. And it's almost two months worth of WoW stuff. <laughs> it does well, happen. It does happen a lot. It does. That's where those uh, WoW tokens come in. Just buy Man, them from the auction house. I wish I had gold. Yeah. I'm too I'm too busy doing doing daily quests and world quests to to farm gold. Well, good news, you're probably very rich in Azerite. <laughs> There's a lot of Azerite going around right so now. So much Azerite. I didn't even check what the quests were yesterday, but I assumed it rewarded Azerite. It probably yeah, didn't. It did. It's always going to be the day that you don't check. But uh, it was a lot of Azerite. It's been a lot of I'm, Azerite. I'm really surprised the planet is not healed by now. <laughs> well, it's because we keep taking it. <laughs> yeah, I've got more Azerite in my amulet than there's left in the planet. <laughs> All Someone these emissaries have it. in the in the heart and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, crap. Oh, we're good now. OK. Yeah. Go talk to all the emissaries. <laughs> Could you put it back? I was here yesterday. You had 3,000 for me. I'm here today. You got another 3,000. Maybe go put it back in the planet. I'm good. Okay, so I've got the, the mount store pulled up. And we've got... Okay, so Squeakers. That, that was this year. The, the Silverian Dreamer mount. So That's you know, the, the one that is super cool, and I, I really kind of want it. Yeah. Um, let's see. So the alabaster mounts. Um, I mean, I think that's more of a special case. They're from the 15th anniversary. Um, then we have the Dreadwake mount, which everybody was in a huge uproar about, but I never see anybody on. That's because um, it turns out it's a shitty mount. Well, it doesn't like go in the water. <laughs> like uh, I was very excited yeah. about the Dreadwake mount. I got the Dreadwake mount. I summoned it and was like, this is going to be my mount forever. And then it mm -hmm. flew directly in the middle of my screen. And I went, Ugh. and then I tried to land on the water and it didn't do anything on the water. And I went double. Ugh. And then I never summoned it again. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't understand why that does not give you special swim speed. It really like, should. It, it should. I wouldn't even be mad about it because it's a vote. <laughs> like, I just, I don't even, even if I don't buy it, I just expect it to happen. Like, mm -hmm. I just expect it to go faster in the water. Yeah. Uh, so Instead, then, tugboat. Okay, so then we have, so Dreadwake, and then the, the Vulpine Familiar, and then the, the Year of the Pig. So, I mean, that's, aside from the, the Lunar New Year mounts, that's Technically three mounts, uh, if you don't include the alabaster one, because again, special 15th anniversary. I don't think they're going to release a 15th anniversary mount every year. No, but there's also then you can take into account that there's a mount tied up with recruit a friend. Yeah, as well as True, additional transmog, you know, options and all of that. Like, look, they do their thing. I stand by it. People can disagree with me if they like. There's enough stuff to where if you're interested in collecting it all or you like the more unique things, you're probably a little frustrated with the way Blizzard collects money on it. Um, and if you're not, you're not. And if you're happy, you're happy. And hey, congratulations. Keep on being happy. You know what, John? Because I was happy and I knew it. Oh, so you clapped your hands. I see. Yeah. That's, how you, that's what you're supposed to do. At least that's yeah. what I learned growing up. Yeah. Yeah. I have also heard that. Well, good. Good. So, Ryan, a mount is originally what brought you back into the game. And you have OCD Two mounts. about it. Two mounts. Two mounts. Two mounts. Because Altric Valley gave a mount yes. as well. <laughs> and, the, and the plus side of leveling a ton of alts that I'm never going to play. I really should have worked on that during the entire huge long anniversary event. Uh, I leveled one tune in one match and got a level and this it was, was pretty much very... a level a level and a half per per match yeah it was the, the very last night i'm like oh if it goes on tomorrow i should do some more of that <laughs> which it didn't but uh so i've got to ask with you being an ocd mount collector are you absolutely going crazy for the the love rocket see 
this is one of those ones that it's I'm just kind of like eh over because the drop rate for it is like point zero 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 one percent. And so it's it's one of those things. I it took me nine years to get the headless horseman. Oh wow. And so, you know, after that, I was just like, you know, I could take or leave event mounts. <laughs> just, you know, it's a it's a big red rocket. Yeah. Yeah. To some that's really special. Others I, I saw someone on Twitter that was doing it with forty characters a day. Oh my god! To try and to try and get the rocket, like that's the whole day. He, he's like, it took me five and a half hours to do this. I'm gonna have to do it every day, and I'm just thinking, no, no, you really don't have to do that every day. So just use one character. I, I'm I'm running it. I'm doing the queue with my main. Yeah. Every day, but five minutes. Yeah, you're, you're not really going through it thinking, oh, man, today's the day. It's just like, whatever, I'm just getting this out of the way for failure. Yeah, it'd be a pleasant surprise. Yeah. So uh, I saw on a tweet earlier today that someone got it. So that means that the one person got it this year. Oh, okay. so everybody's done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right, guys, back it up. Willy <laughs> Wonka's factory is closed again. <laughs> Yeah, but I, so I, yesterday after raid, I'm just kind of you know winding down and everything. I'm like, ah, I might as well you know run this and everything. And I found out that it is 110 or higher for you know the chance to actually get the love rocket. And I just look at my my list of characters. I'm like, oh man, I leveled everybody to max for Legion because I wanted all those different stories. So guess what? Every class gets a chance. So I just started doing it. And then by the time I got to my demon hunter. <laughs> I got, oh no, it wasn't my demon hunter. What's right after my demon hunter? It was my hunter. I get, so my hunter shows up. I'm like, okay, cool. We're going to do this. And then all of a sudden I get the queue. I finish the queue and, and uh, it's my turn to go in and I'm getting the whole, you've entered too many instances recently. I'm like, okay, I'm done for the night. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. It, it is, it is funny. I've actually been, uh, going back and doing the old Legion class campaign mm -hmm. content. And the more I, the more I do it, the more I think, man, Legion was really good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it had full on quest content for every single class, a special little, you know, 30 minute to an hour quest line for every single artifact weapon. Mm hmm. It had class mounts that were a whole extra thing that you could do, all unique mm -hmm. per per class. It had your mage tower, like class armor, class titles, class, class armor, class titles, mm -hmm. tier gear. I said it. Some might call it a great expansion. expansion. Well, not perfect, because mm, yeah, because yeah, like, Lich King was the, perfect the point expansion. too. Was uh, Pandaria was also another perfect expansion. It's almost like it was on the <laughs> upswing expansion list as yeah. opposed to the downswing <laughs> expansion list. Yeah, yeah. But no, you're it right. is and funny that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's you're wrong. Literally the exact same team that does everything, but somehow they forget a bunch of stuff every <laughs> other expansion. Um. Well, see, so what what happens is. So, you know, the, the team's, you know, working hard. They're doing a great job and everything. And then they finish the expansion and then some of them take vacation. And then that's when the planning happens for the next one. But they the, those groups of people take turns on when they take their vacation. So, you know, there's always something that's forgotten in between. That, that, that's got to be it. They need to mix those vacation schedules <laughs> up a little bit. I think the problem might be in, in an effort to try and get the content out at a better pace we're at a place where, I mean, we know that they're working on the next expansion before the actual next expansion is even out. Mm -hmm. So Shadowlands is on its way and whatever's following Shadowlands, they're probably just starting up. You know, they're, they're probably in pre-production, whatever you want to call it at this point, which means Shadowlands was designed off the lessons learned from Legion. Mm -hmm. And 
they don't they didn't know for battle for azeroth what was really going to hit and what was really going to miss in legion they had probably had a guess i mean you know they're smart people there there's not uh they're not going to be sitting there going well we have no idea what people will like and not like but they also don't know for sure so a lot of people really loved the the weapons in legion but what if people hadn't they're in the Mm pre-production do you double down on the weapons what if people hated it what if it was the most hated feature what if it was like garrisons where everybody loved it for the first couple of weeks then everybody hated it like what do you do in that situation and so they're in this weird spot where they've kind of developed this mentality of okay we have per expansion features and it's going to live and breathe in this expansion and then it's going to die and go away and in Legion, it turns out that a lot of that stuff that was the per-expansion feature really hit perfectly for me. I love the way legendary items worked. I love the way the, the weapons worked. I love the class focus. I loved all these things. But had all that stuff failed and had all that stuff not worked really well, and they had just said, well, we're pretty sure it's going to be good. Let's do more of it and let's refine it for Battle for Azeroth. Now, all of a sudden, they're pitching us on another two years of that thing that everybody hates or hated. And going, oh, we we have to course correct again. And so there's an element of the design choice that makes sense. But as a result, I think that's what leads to these swings. Is It's a shot in the dark almost every single time. Like, Not to say that they aren't learning their lessons or figuring it out. But when you throw everything out and say, okay, well, we're going to do raids, dungeons. There will be leveling, you know, whatever. Now let's figure out the rest around it. Um you know, it can be a hit and miss every single time. And I that doesn't necessarily guarantee an up and down pattern like they've had, but it's uh it's fine. I mean, so, sorry, Manny, who's here in the chat. I know the idea of Manny being here is weird, so I had to just explain that. Uh, Manny is here in the chat and he says, Wait, you like the legendaries? Like you mean you liked them except the acquisition? Uh, Yeah, I liked the Legendary system. As established talking about Corrupted Gear, Legendaries kind of broke the game in a fun way for me. I think there were a lot of frustrating bad things about it, but uh, I thought the Legendary system, all of a sudden I got a Legendary item that changed the way I played my character, and I thought that was cool as hell, and I'd love to see something like that again. I think I, I, I totally agree with with the 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 logic behind that although i think that logic can only go to a certain point and then at one some point you're you got to be like okay how many expansions have we done two a lot we've done a lot of expansions (laughs) four so when designing the expansions i have to think okay let's look back at these six plus expansions that we've done what has worked in these six plus expansions and what hasn't worked in these six plus expansions. Okay, cool. Let's take the stuff that works and and expand on it. I think one of my biggest problems with the way wow has gone, like the last several expansions is kind of what you mentioned with the, it's a bunch of systems that are very contained to an expansion. And as soon as the next expansion comes out, legitimately half the content from the old expansion is just gone. Like all that work, all that effort, all that dev time is just completely gone, never to be played again. And this is like, like right now, if you level through Legion, it feels like a husk because there's absolutely nothing to do with your artifact weapon at all. Like there's no tech tree, there's no nothing. It's just this burnout husk that you throw one or two um, little whatever's totems. Uh, I don't know what you mean the little relic essences? pieces, relics, yeah. relics, or, oh relics, whatever. Right. Yeah. I don't know if they're called little... relics, but I got them the other day because I was doing transmog runs yeah. in Legion zones, yeah, and I no, got them, relics. and I was like, oh right, this was a thing. Yeah. And so, and that's, it's, it sucks, uh, quite a bit that so much of that stuff just, uh, like if you leveled through warlords again, most of the garrison stuff worthless, 
Like yeah. it just doesn't really exist anymore or it exists in a completely nerfed watered down fashion. And so it's, I don't know. I would love to see them invest in something that could carry through so that if I took another, especially now that they're going to be doing this whole huge level revamp, it'd be super cool to be able to have something that would carry through so that when I actually took my new character from zero to 60 or whatever, I could actually play the full bit of what that expansion, Pandaria, Legion, Warlords, whatever had to offer versus here's the super watered down version of it because we had all these systems. There were one expansion system. And as soon as the expansion was done, we pretty much just pulled everything out. So two, two questions for you guys. One, why is the mission table the only thing that's been carrying over when it's horseshit? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. And two, uh, and th- th- that's basically more of a, uh, you know, don't answer that. I, I have no, I want to answer it because okay. something okay. happened yeah, with yeah, the yeah. mission table the other day, and I was like, wait a minute, what? Okay, well, what, what happened with the mission table? I, My I do have uh, a follower question. became legendary, and I don't know what that means on this mission oh, it, table because that means whole thing's nothing, John. Dumb. It means nothing. All of my followers are legendary. And you know what it does? Nothing. <laughs> I was like, oh, great. They're legendary. I was like, what does that mean? It's like they have an equipment slot. I was like, where? where when did I get equipment? Where is this? No, you have to make equipment if you're a crafter. And it takes a massive amount of mats in order to make an equipment slot or a thing of equipment to get you maybe some more mats. No, that's horse shit. That table doesn't get me anything. I don't, they don't need more equipment. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting me rep right now because like, I started an Alliance character. <laughs> yeah. Th- that's the problem. That's like it. the mission table could be cool. I still think it's a decent feature. The problem is, is like, like they've, they've just changed it. They've been like, well, we put too much emphasis on it. Let's roll it back. Let's roll it back. Let's roll it back. And now we've rolled it back to a point where it's like, why am I doing this right now? For 3,000 Azerites. <laughs> uh, and by 3,000, I mean 267 or yeah. 322 right. or 400. Like, okay, it, does it bother anyone else that the amount of Azerite that you get does not match the picture? Like, you could have two <laughs> two things r- like right next to each other. One is this giant piece of Azerite. It's like 200 Azerite. Then the one below is like a little tiny sliver, and it's like 472. Yeah, this mission that, that will take 48 <laughs> hours. You're going to have to commit all your best people. You're going to, at best, even if you min-max, you're going to have a 120% chance of success because this mission's hard. What do I get for this mission? You're going to get 280 Azerite, buddy. It's because the tiny, <laughs> the tiny little slivers come from more vital organs of the planet. <laughs> Than the big, the big chunks. It's like this used to be a white blood cell. <laughs> like, look, I have told people, um, you know, when we do the like, well, John didn't play that much. Where's he? And then all of a sudden, people are like, wait a minute, how are you still relevant, <laughs> Azerite wise? Like, I've almost hit. Uh, I definitely am at seventy five. I've unlocked the last slot. Hey, I don't know how much further past that I am. Like, surprisingly relevant for somebody who doesn't run island expeditions, has no, uh, doesn't do raids, doesn't really do dungeons anymore, like, does bare minimum content, and people are like, how are you staying relevant in this game at all? And I'm like, I use the mission table. So clearly it does something. (laughs) Uh, But at the same time, like, it's not exciting, and the rewards are so minimal, and there is a stupid thing about, like, okay, go out for 24 hours so I can get uh, an eighth of the amount of Azerite that I'll get for doing one emissary quest. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Tomorrow it's going to be the same emissary quest for the same reward. So it's... uh, it's really, really an, an odd, an odd thing. I think, I think you guys brought up a really good point. Uh, and I, I've been feeling this kind of throughout all of BFA. Uh, when you, like when you mentioned the, uh, the follower equipment and stuff, I honestly had no idea that existed. I think BFA out of all the expansions that I've played and I played out all of them, BFA has done an absolutely horrid job at explaining their systems. 
like how their systems work, like the followers stuff. I had no idea about the equipment and maybe I would have known if I were there on like the patch that patched it in it or whatever. But I came back. I've just been running stuff. No one told me about this. No one, no one told me about the follower equipment. How does all this corruption work? Why does one piece have more corruption than another piece, but it looks like it does the same effect? I don't know. Am I going to get how much corruption should I should I be running? I don't know. Here's like, a, they didn't hardly explain the corruption system at all to me. Here's I'm a question like, that's around and all of a sudden tentacles are attacking me and I'm just like, what is, what's going on? Here's a question that's going to sound like I'm being funny, but like, honestly, I might this might be a thing and I'm curious if it is. Is there like a rule that you only get boots and bracers from your stupid cash for doing the her horrific visions? I have gotten nothing but boots and bracers. I have done gotten... multiple runs every week. Every piece of gear has been boots or bracers. Boots, That's it. Bracers and uh, belt. Oh, and gloves. I got gloves once. Okay, but you can get other things. Like there could yeah. be pants in there. I need pants. I, I need I'm pants only too. Never. I only have four fifteen weapon. pants. No weapons <laughs> and no pants. Actually, what does I it have, mean? I don't know where I got it because I don't, you know, keep track. But I have a corrupted weapon. Oh, so nice. I got something. I got it from somewhere. I don't know where, but I got it. I need an offhand though. But I feel your pain. Yeah, I'll never get that. But oh, well. <laughs> I've got a weapon. I want to talk more about this pants scarcity. Is everybody in that boat? Have pants been like a low, like upgrade point for other people? Because that's weird that two of us here are like, man, pants. We freaking need them. To be honest, I've only gotten <laughs> one. No, two, two pairs of pants as loot since 8.3 dropped. So you're just saying pants aren't dropping this expansion. Yeah. Or at least this patch. For sure. That's a that's a sad, sad thing. My pants are all the way up. Uh but they're uh they're four fifteen corrupted pants, and we've all know how much I like the corruption that's on my pants. Yes, we do. Okay, so <laughs> you know how I how I said I had two questions? <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's the second question? Going to the second second question. question. This is actually like serious question. This isn't uh, about the, the piece of crap mission table. So being that Battle for Azeroth, one of the big selling points and everything was that we would have our faction specific stuff. You know, like in Legion, we had the class specific stuff. So this we had faction specific stuff. Oh, yeah. Faction pride. I remember when we thought yeah. that was going to be what this expansion was. <laughs> I'm not even saying talking about the pride itself. But do you think that I, I would say we're, we're definitely coming to the end of this expan expansion. Do you think that that was a successful gamble on Blizzard's part? The focus on faction? Yeah. No. No. It didn't make me play Alliance any more than I normally would, which was very little. And it made me hate playing my alts. And also they did a bad job on the faction story. And also they once again made the Horde story the interesting one and the, the full focus. So the poor Alliance just got to be like, we're heroic off here, irrelevant to the happenings. We're going to kill the king. Like the big showdown with Sylvanas was literally Horde versus Horde. Like, Anduin was there, like, I'll hold your shirt so you can go fight or whatever. But, like, that was it. I don't. I, it sucks. Like, it's a bummer. It should have been Horde Pride versus Alliance also Pride. And it should have it should have felt good to be both your factions. And instead, it felt shitty to be the Horde and you felt ignored to be the Alliance. So, congratulations, think, Blizzard. The faction thing sucked. Do you think part of that problem was that most of the big moments happened out of game. Like, I feel like a lot of the really big moments of this expansion happened in cinematics on Blizzard's YouTube channel and not inside the game itself. Well, Does that make I, sense? I did view those cinematics in game. So there's that at least. But the fact that everything was released, you know, on YouTube and like spoiled for everybody beforehand anyway, I think that made a big difference, but it is 
kind of rough when so okay if you take both sides of, of the whole questing experience you have basically the first part and the second part of the expansion and what it means first part of the expansion is the horde side of everything you know uh you go through old deer there's you know all that stuff with uh dazzler and uh bomb zombie and all that i love the bond zombie part oh that yeah. was actually that was actually one of the the big highlights of the horde campaign for me yeah then second part of the expansion has to do with nazoth and the old gods and everything and that's really kind of more the alliance side of everything so basically they took the entire like how normally on previous expansions you'd level through let's say all six of those zones and you'd get the whole story that way with this they just cut it right in half and said hey let's just have these guys over here and these guys over here and then in order to actually get the whole story you need to play both sides but even then the impact is not nearly as good because most people relate to like you know their faction or their one character or whatever and even though I did level through both sides, I just kind of like, okay, I'm max on my horde character and, you know, working on getting ready to raid and, and end game and stuff like that. Okay, let's go back and level some more, go through this. And even then, it, it I don't know, it, it felt a little bit more disjointed on the Alliance side. Like those three zones didn't really mesh together as well as I think the three zones on the horde side did. It's one of those things where, you know, they say about a compromise, you know, a compromise is good because everybody's unhappy. And I feel like that's <laughs> I feel like that's where we landed with this thing, because here's the thing. Um, uh, Sage time in the chat, I think an alliance player said no, because the alliance out of game events were mostly irrelevant. And I see that. And if you look at the big cinematic and the big story beats that happen, they really went the way that was going to upset the most people, it felt like. Now, I don't want to speak for everyone and say everyone hates the story and it didn't land for anybody because I know that's not true. But I mean, it's, it's a neat story overall. It just wasn't told, I think, in the 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 best way. But let's take a look at something like the scene where Anduin goes to Bane and is like, is it enough people? Like, can we do this? Is it going to be good enough? Like this big heroic moment. And you're really not going to appeal to anybody with this because you've already divided the horde where some people aren't even on board with Bane being there. So they're going to view it as an Alliance cinematic. The Alliance is looking at it going, why you got these horde characters all up in my business? Where's our story? We haven't been involved in all of this. And it seems like all you're doing is setting up Sourfang and Bane. And the story they told kind of there was like, okay, well, Anduin allowed all these things to happen. So he's a hero, right? But he's kind of just this passive hero. Like he kind of pushed events into motion. And then you watch the horde do a bunch of things so the alliance isn't happy because they feel like they're taking a back seat and the horde isn't happy because we're divided we can't even agree with each other on who should be the war chief and what's going on and we're going this is all about alliance stuff basically both sides feel like the story was about the other side and they're both kind of right and that's weird yeah mm. yeah yeah i can see that it's it's interesting. I okay. I need to counterbalance this. Okay. With okay. What I liked from BFA. Yeah, I liked a lot about BFA. So yeah, go ahead. I, I, yeah. I feel like I feel like before before I say anything else that I didn't like about BFA, I need to balance it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to balance it. Yeah, a, compliment sandwich. Compliment yeah, sandwich. It's a compliment sandwich. Uh, the uh, is is problematic it, or is somewhat problematic as horrific visions are i think they're they're really interesting mm -hmm. and i it makes me honestly really at least tentatively excited for torghast yeah like i i really like like what they're trying to do i'm i'm not a huge fan of like the constant and this expansion has been really bad about just timed elements mm -hmm. so many things islands uh i was watching it, it might have been bellular or something youtube where he was talking about uh because i love mythic plus me and me and my buddies the the other zord guys i play with that's our main thing we're doing right now from a progression standpoint none of us like have the time to raid really but we usually get on one or two nights a week and try and push keys and it's actually been 
quite a bit of fun and it's it's a good way to get geared too but uh one of the things he was mentioning is blizzard has really gotten themselves into this systematic boxed mindset where everything has to be like a self-balancing self-maintaining system mm -hmm. and so like mythic plus now all dungeons going forward need to be designed in such a way that they can be turned into mythic plus and does that potentially break creativity in or creative ideas in this dungeon could be super unique and super cool in x y and z way but we can't do that because that wouldn't work for mythic plus and so i thought that was a, a really a really interesting thing it's the same with visions like i would love to be able to just like experiment with visions and try a bunch of different strategies and stuff like that but i'm scared to because i've only got x amount of vials that i can use mm -hmm. i need them to level up my cloak and if i don't i'm gonna feel start feeling like i'm getting behind because i need six of these things to upgrade my cloak this week which means i have to do three runs of two bonus objectives each if i screw that up all of a sudden i'm adding another one on or I'm adding another one on. And so mm -hmm. right now I'm not incented. I, I'm incented to be as careful as possible so I don't get behind. Is, does that make sense? Totally. And so, okay, uh, talking about unique and awesome features like in dungeons, John, one of your favorite things last expansion was, what was it, Court of Stars or whatever yep. the other Surmar one was, where because you were a rogue, you were able to poison the boss and like, that's it. That was the end of the fight. If you start bringing that into Mythic Plus, that just means, OK, we need to make sure to have a rogue with us. Right. And right. It, it changes their idea of balancing and what fun and everything should be unless they just make it into Mythic Plus. Just that's not an option to do. And if that happens, I think it kind of cheapens the entire experience to, to begin with, because I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that started out as a Mythic Dungeon, wasn't it? uh it, might have yeah, been it was definitely a higher tier dungeon for sure yeah so. i think it was one of the mythic ones you had to get all the way through suramar first and then i think later on in the expansion they actually added that as a heroic instead or as well yeah but i mean limiting limiting whatever limiting, limiting <laughs> um you know dungeon creation and creativity and everything is something that I think is a a huge, huge thing that Blizzard needs to be aware of, because if that's the content that the people who, you know, don't raid are supposed to just continuously do, you need to have like unique approaches and different things that can happen to really make it interesting. Like imagine if I, you know, do a group finder all the time, never going with a rogue. And then all of a sudden get one with rogue, they pop in and they're like, Oh, hold on, guys. I got this. Poison. Boom. Dude's dead. Yay. Everybody's happy. It's a cool, neat thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and being able to build in something like that into dungeons going forward, I still think is a huge missed opportunity that Blizzard didn't like do anything like that with with this expansion. And if they did, I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, I didn't encounter it either. And, you know, it's uh, considering the show is that it's over point. Uh, it's probably mm -hmm. too late to get into this topic. But one thing that would be good to talk about, and we'd probably have to be selective on the guests we have to talk about this. Manny might be a good person to have for this topic. <laughs> um <laughs> is uh, to, to get into exactly that, because I feel like a lot of decisions in this game are made to keep the people that are the cutting edge, the elite, the content pushers happy, and they do it at the expense of stupid, dumb fun. Like, yeah. you know, well, you we talked let's... a lot about that last week uh, with uh, Spencer and Jason. And I mean, there's a great discussion on that. Yeah. And it, it's one of those things where it's like, hey, are we making a game for people to pat themselves on the back and go, look how far I got on challenging content? And if we are, that's fine. Or are we making a game that's fun for a large audience and a lot of people? Uh, because I think if you try to do both, I think it's possible you have to be careful. And I don't know if Blizzard always nails it mm -hmm. yeah sometimes i mean with everything that blizzard's thrown in to make everybody happy 
I think that, uh, you know, they, they've diluted some of the really fun stuff over the years. And, like, this is coming from someone who used to be huge into pet battles. But then, you know, when every expansion throws in 500 new pets, I'm like, ah, that's too much. I, I don't have time for this anymore. I used to, it used to be something I enjoyed a lot. You know, PvP is always changing every single expansion. And, I mean, I think this expansion had a really good like changed with war mode and everything. And I know a ton of people took care of that and loved it. Um, I think that's probably my favorite part of the expansion. Like my favorite feature from the expansion, I think is war mode. I, I think that was a, one of the, one of the systems that is almost universally praised mm -hmm. and for good reason. I, I think it's great. Oh, definitely. And I mean, it just, you know, rating has always been a huge focus because that's kind of what started you know, being the only thing for Endgame, you know, way back in vanilla. And, you know, we've said it many times before on the show, but it's really hard to have a patch come out that has something for everybody that'll last long enough and keep them interested until the next patch. And it's a struggle that I know that Blizzard is always trying to, you know, tackle and beat. But at some point, I don't know, are they too thin? Mm -hmm. Is there enough butter for this this gaming bread? We may never know. Yeah, we'll we'll find out for for how long A three lasts. That's true. <laughs> well, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Azeroth Roundtable. It has been an absolute pleasure having you on. Thank you guys so much for having me. I've been I've been really like wanting to talk to somebody else about this, who I feel like would get me. Yeah. And I appreciate you guys Aww. for letting me get excited about a few things and vent about the other things. Of course. Well, that's one thing that our show is about. It's it's the it's the safe place for everybody to come, except for maybe Manny. Talk to, about weapons. Know, talk about whatever they want. <laughs> Manny's or the lack now. thereof. Yeah. Like yeah. you can either show up or you cannot show up if you've if you got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Ryan, until I'm next so time. I'm so sorry, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, we love you, man. Anyways, <laughs> um, until next time, Ryan, where can people find you? <laughs> you can. <laughs> oh, Ben. You can, you can find me on Twitter at TVKZord. Uh, you can also find me on some of the other shows I do. One, no, two other ones with you what uh, yeah we have a uh a campaign D, D show called plus five to hit and we also have a discussion D, D show called the end discussions which is a lot of fun and then as wicked kitten continually reminds me we have i have uh, another campaign play show called feats of fellowship that just started up it's fun i play a fighter who is a blacksmith and is very straight and to the point is probably one of the funnest characters I've ever played. Yeah, so go it, check that out too. It's a lot of fun. Check out Spazbot Studios uh, Twitch for that. And now I did hear from a little bird that at some point it is potentially going to be in podcast form. It's, which it's coming. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Very much so. But you definitely check out some of those past episodes. They're a lot of fun. Hey, John. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, now, we're talking about places to find people, and the thing that comes to mind from, you know, just total curiosity on my part is, what are midichlorians? Uh, they're from your blood. All right. And where can people find you? <laughs> uh, hey, if you want to find more from me, you can follow me on Twitter at John underscore Jagger. I will let you know where I'm going to be, what I'm up to. But hey, if you want to catch me on another show, you can catch me on Core. Core! That is a, uh, that's a video game podcast where we talk oh. about video games. It's quite uh, good. I, I, I know Ryan is familiar with the earlier incarnation of the show where we talked about Heroes of the Storm, which we sometimes still do because Bo played a lot of it. And I know that because he's talked about it on Core. So oh, I thought that was a dead game. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's still alive, still being played. Uh, and uh, hey, it's a great show. It's really fun, and I think you all should check it out. Heroesforyou.com is where you can go to do that. 
also, I am I am also in uh, uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons on the internet. Uh, as everyone as, should. As literally everyone on this podcast does. <laughs> uh, everyone we have here does it. I also do it. I do a show called There Will Be Dungeons. Uh, we we just hit level 10, and that's all you need to know. Uh, hey, you should yeah. check it out, therewillbedungeons.com. Uh, we're on episode 93, but don't let that deter you. You can jump right in and join the hijinks and uh, get involved in one of the weirdest campaigns that's ever been conceived. <laughs> it's it's so different true. than what you would think. Yeah, if you're like, man, I'm looking for something different, got you covered yeah ben was on that show his his character's currently floating through the void of space yep (laughs) so you know like that's that's very appropriate for a bow campaign oh well the funny thing is is the episode but like before it happened i i told bo i'm like okay i I can do this week but the next week i i can't i can't commit because i made a different commitment and then the week that we were going to play uh, it got canceled, so <laughs> I wasn't part of this big, awesome fight that I was super planning on and getting ready to do. <laughs> so it goes, it goes in. It's my turn, and I slip and fly through the void of space. <laughs> but I mean, in all honesty, that was my suggestion to Bo on what should happen to him. So I'm like, hey, this, and because of that, who knows if I'll ever show up again? Oh, <laughs> who knows? It's really and, good, and and that's the thing. It's He's a character designed to just randomly show up, so it'll be perfect if it happens. Yeah, there will be dungeons. Got a lot of weird stuff. Uh, who knew we were gonna wind up in a in a planescape setting? I didn't, but we're in Sigil, yeah. so uh, maybe spoilers. But you know yeah. what? Who knows? So the, a lot of it, stuff happens. If you think that every Dungeons and Dragons game is Lord of the Rings, you're very wrong, <laughs> and that is proof. <laughs> So there you go. There will be dungeons.com. Check it out. We record every Sunday, except when we don't, and it makes Ben's character have to be jettisoned <laughs> in space. <laughs> eh, could be worse. Ben, when you're not floating through space or on the shows that TBK already talked about, uh, <laughs> where can people find you? Uh, well, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Ben Baumhofer, which uh, thanks for mostly getting that right last week, John. I do appreciate it. <laughs> I said many and, uh, things, and one of them was correct. And one of them was correct. Um, I also do a show with Aluda called Box Fort, where we basically geek out what, about whatever we want to, whether that's TV shows, movies, video games, uh, Dungeons & Dragons, whatever. So check that out. We have a new episode recording next week. This show, though, Azeroth Roundtable, the one that you have just been listening to, if this is the first episode that you've ever heard, hey, you can listen to every other episode that we have ever recorded. You can find that on iTunes, uh, on TuneIn, Spotify, or at the ever-popular AzerothRoundtable.com. There, you can also find a link to our Discord, where, you know, we chat here and there, talk about some things. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's serious, sometimes, uh, you know, John makes fun of me. Kind of like the show. Did I? When did I make I fun know. of you on there? I don't know, not recently. John making fun of people? I don't. That doesn't. Sound like I said it wasn't. Me. It wasn't recent. That doesn't, doesn't sound matter. right. <laughs> doesn't <laughs> matter. Sound right. Uh, but if you want to uh, contact us, you can always email us, and that's to azerothroundtable at gmail dot com. And of course, you can tweet at us. That's at azerothrt. And last but not least, from me at least, uh, we do stream this Friday nights. Check out twitch tv slash azerothrt and uh, watch our Twitter to find out when we're going to go live. Hey everybody, here we are at the end of the show, winding down. We had fun. Gathered around, talked some World of Warcraft. Maybe some of you vented a little bit about some frustrations in life and you feel better. Maybe some of you got a little frustrated about the things we said. No matter how you felt about the episode, there's one thing that's certain. You can support us by going to patreon.com slash AzerothRT. <laughs> Sorry, as I said it, I was like, I don't know what the correlation is here, but... <laughs> I, I guess you can do that. That's a thing you can do. Regardless of how you feel, that's still a thing you can do. Uh, Patreon.com slash AzerothRT. Uh, you can help make memories like the one you just experienced. You'll remember this for a good five minutes at least. And can you really put a price on that? We did. And you'll find out what it is at Patreon.com slash AzerothRT. 
So every week we want to give a big thank you to those of you who go above and beyond. Uh, those are the patrons in the Murloc Club, and that is Aaron, Caleb M., Kilroy Tastic, Michael Van something. It always gets cut off and I'm never prepared for it. Michael Van, you know who you are. Sarah M. and Taryn, thank you so much for going above and beyond for us. That's Murloc for You Rock. This has been As Roundtable, Round Table, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Chat room, you've been fantastic as always. Ryan, thank you again for joining us. John, it's good to be back. And until next time, everybody, be good to each other. Just, Usually John says something. I was, <laughs> I, was busy re- I was busy reading Manny's comment. John may have made fun of you on the last show, <laughs> but I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't know anything about that. I would. This is know. just like whose line? Everything's made up, and the points don't matter. That's exactly. Right. Just for that, you get ten thousand points. Ooh. Oh, sweet. Great. Yeah. I went to see Great. what the last thing I posted in the Discord was, oh, and I, have I was no idea. reminded that people are happily still talking about the grapes guy from uh, <laughs> Serum. <laughs> yes. Vintner, whatever. Yeah, Vintner, whatever. <laughs> I have to. Hey, I went. I went back. I went back there. I don't remember why I went back there, but it Were was you a quest. Were you Volpira? Oh, that yeah. The, the, yep, mm-hmm. Volpira go that over there, it. hang out with the old Vintner. Made, some, made, some, made a, a vintage, and he, he loved it. Problem oh, is, yeah. I don't remember the voice. I have to go back and look up what I did, because I don't remember what the voice I did for it was. All he knows is that it was just wrong. I just remember. I just remember he wanted you to stomp on his grapes. Yeah. Well, the good news is, is that the, the comments about it actually say the episode title, which is like, what, almost 100 episodes ago? Yeah, <laughs> Something like that. it's been a long time since we did the Vintner character on the show, but yeah, hey. But people still, yeah, it's... You know it's what, a... John? He's still over there, <laughs> still stomping on his grapes. Yeah, he doesn't get as many for the rest of eternity. St- stomp on the grapes. Maybe if you came over yeah. for a little bit. Just stomp, stomp on the grapes. <laughs> stomp on the grapes. That's not the voice. <laughs> stomp on the grapes. You went, you went full family guy. Here I am wearing nothing but pride as. Thanks, local Clovis. That's a great quote. I don't know if I ever said it, but uh, I'll take it. That's a good. Stomp on the grapes. Yeah. Maybe if you'd be interested, you could um, stomp on the grapes. Just stomp <laughs> on the grapes. Stop saying stomp on the grapes. I don't know. Oh, I should end the show. I'm still recording. Add some flowers, then stomp on the grapes. What if you just stomped a little on the grapes? Just around the yes, periphery. Grapes. What if you stomped on the periphery <laughs> of the grapes? Actually, I think this is the voice. I think I found it. <laughs> I think you did too, John. Oh, look at it. I stumbled upon it. And wouldn't it just be lovely if you would just, I don't know, maybe unequip your pants of corruption and stomp on the grapes? You know, <laughs> or it's, you it's wouldn't really be able close. to if you actually could get them, but you can't. Well, so you don't have any pants for anyone. anyone. I may be responsible for the disappearance of a couple of oh, pairs of pants, pants in the world. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. It's, it's really similar to Die and Tell Us. I know. I came up with the voice as I was working on Die and Tell Us's voice. That's how it came from. It's been a long time since I've had to do his voice, too. Oh, man. Dying Talus probably wants people to stomp on his grapes. Anyway, that's all that's going to be relevant for the recording. So we're going to end the recording right there and give a little stomp on the grapes. All right, that's the end of the recording. We'll keep streaming, but that's the end of the recording. Still streaming, but that's the end of the recording. Uh, Let's see. It's been a long time since I've been Dying Talus. Dying Talus is a little less high-pitched. He's a little deeper. So his is a yeah. little more... Yes, Stan. There, there hasn't ever since he was extracted, he hasn't shown up again, has he? He showed up on Twitter, but other than that, no. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, Manny, thank you for joining us in chat. Are you available to join us on the show next week? <laughs> but like, actually, though, because you'd yes, be probably like, the really only here. guest, and if you didn't show up, it would probably be worse than last week. Yeah, no one likes me and John episodes <laughs> except for me and John. Yeah. 
for, for yeah, for real. real. Are you able to join us? <laughs> 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 yeah, don't listen to Sarah. She said for fake Z's. No, we mean for real Z's. For real. Real Z's. Here, j just to prove it, I'm going to message you in Discord. Give him John, all the time that. zones that we record. I love that Spider Gwen poster that you have. I, I got that yeah, for Ben him. gave Did that you? to me. Yeah, I have the same one that's right awesome. there, actually. Yeah, this it's was, a good one. This was a gift from Ben. I, you, you have to ch you have to tell me where you got that one. I, I got it from it. Ben from Phoenix Comic Con. <laughs> oh, so good luck. Oh frick! <laughs> <laughs> I guess that that ship has sailed. Oh goodness. I can't read the artist. Oh, uh, never mind. Do <laughs> a search for Cobra Colors. Cobra Colors? Uh, www.americadiscord, but with an H.com. Oh, man. Is this going to take people to, like, some bad site? Now I'm going to have to that's take the website down. That, it's the website that's on there. <sighs> if you ruin my poster, Ben, through research and understanding... Be By the way, I, I will say, I have confirmation from Manny. He is in for next week. Does he know the time? I gave him the time. <laughs> in Pacific. That's and what I, I gave him, and it didn't that, work. <laughs> I know that's not the coast he's on. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, it's fun. Manny, we're glad you could be here again. <laughs> in the chat uh ryan we're glad you could be here for reels it was so much fun um and uh ben i'm glad you could be back to uh sitting there well thanks i i as much as i enjoyed my time away uh, i do enjoy doing the show with you yeah we have a good time yeah. Uh, that's so. gonna be it, everybody. Thank you all for coming out and spending a little bit of your Friday evening with us, unless it's not Friday where you are, and then, you know, whatever time of Saturday it is for you. Thanks for hanging out. Unless it's randomly Sunday somehow. No. It, you know what? If you're watching this on a VOD, have a good one. Yeah. Hey, you know what? VOD people don't get enough credit. Yeah. Look at this. Hey. Overwatch going, League Vod? stuff in there. Vod, you are so cool. Hey, Overwatch League is pretty cool. I haven't watched it at all this season because it's on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, how's that going? Uh, I did a poem about Overwatch today. <laughs> did you? Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue. You have more features than Overwatch 2. <laughs> wow. 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 You, well, considering the game technically hasn't been released yet, that is definitely true. <laughs> I mean, you can judge if that's a nice poem or a bad poem. It could be taken either way. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, look at that. I actually have one of those prints. That is really cool. Yeah, that's neat. People can no maybe No one knows what we're talking about. <laughs> Let's... It, yep, it's not really showing up on the screen. <laughs> you can see the bottom of it. You can tell I'm looking at something, but you can't tell what it is. It's art. Yeah. It's really cool. I like when my art's lenticular. Uh, all right, anyway, I was saying goodbye to everybody, so hey, <laughs> everyone, thanks for showing up. We'll miss you, but we'll see you next week. Stomp on the grapes. Maybe you could come by and stomp on the grapes. <laughs>